Before I begin the video, I would like to apologize for the tapping sounds that you might hear throughout the video. I tried editing out as much as I could, but I couldn't get all of it. I have ADHD, and since I'm sitting for long periods of time when I record my audio, I tend to fidget. I can't really help it. I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. So, when I was recording the audio for the video and rewriting parts of the script to make it flow better and re-recording it, I had a bit of an epiphany. I was originally just going to talk about why I left YouTube and why I'm back and make it a sort of update video, but I realized that this is actually a great opportunity to talk about what being an amateur is and the YouTubers mentality as a whole, so to speak. In terms of smallish independent creators, at least, particularly in the art community. This is, of course, just a bit of an opinion video about my personal experience here on YouTube and what I think it all means. If you've had a different or even similar experience, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. So, without further ado, allow me to introduce myself. Hola everyone, my name is Dana, and I used to make YouTube videos. The last time I made a YouTube video was... over two years ago. I never did upload super regularly, maybe once a month or so, twice if I was lucky. Mainly, I made speed paints. I made a couple story time animations and a few goofs here and there. I'm sorry to my 200 subscribers <laughs> for leaving you guys behind, though I don't know if any of you even remember me. My last video was on April 2018. It was actually an April Fool's joke video, which wasn't really much of a joke. It wasn't really funny. Uh, it was just it was nothing, really. But as it turns out, the real joke was uh, me abandoning this channel for two years. And the real fool was me all along. You know what's funny? I've been meaning to make that joke of like the real April Fool's joke being me leaving this channel and that I'm the real fool since like a month or two after I actually made that original video because I have actually been trying to make YouTube videos ever since. And there's a lot of reasons for why I couldn't bring myself to make more videos. But before I say why I stopped, I should tell you that it's not because I had lost interest or that I was no longer passionate. In fact, like I said, I kept trying to make videos because I really, really enjoyed making videos. One of them in particular that I was really proud of was a review that I made of a webcomic called No Future on the Tapass app. And although it's obvious that I made it on my free time during my last year of high school, I think I actually did a pretty good job and I liked making it. I had, I also had these animated story time videos that not only gained me a lot of attention, but I worked really hard on them because I liked them. Specifically, the first one gave me a lot of attention. The other ones, not so much, but I still liked making them. Even though I don't like them anymore, and by the time you watch this video, they will already be privated because of personal reasons that I do not want to get into, I am still proud of myself for taking the time to create them. And, of course, there's all my speed paint videos, which may not be super interesting or have required a lot of editing effort, even though I did take the time to edit out gaps and times when I tab out. I still really enjoyed making them and re-watching them. I re-watched my speed paint videos a lot because <laughs> I thought it was really interesting to watch my own process and I loved watching other people's speed paints. All this to say, I was actually really passionate about making videos. So why did I stop? Well, the reason why I stopped making videos was because I was insecure. 
and I began to put too much pressure on myself. And I think it's because there was a point where the Storytime animation community was receiving a lot of criticism from the commentary community and from a lot of senior animators who viewed Storytime animation as lazy and not valid. And this was reflected in their audience as well. Of course, it's not their faults that I felt this way. Those were just their opinions. But I did end up taking a lot of those criticisms pretty personally. Now, I could go into depth about how I both agree and disagree with a lot of the arguments made back then by the commentary channels towards the animation community in 2018 and 2019, though I mainly disagree, but that's not the point of this video. If you'd like to see that, I do recommend checking out Quinn Curio's video, Everything Wrong with the Animation Community Critics. It's a long one, but it's very good, and it echoes many of my sentiments. Anyways, most of those storytime animators have YouTube as their job. Therefore, it was ridiculous for me to compare myself to them. I was an amateur, and I was upset about it, despite the fact that there is nothing wrong with being an amateur. Not to mention, and maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but... Some of these commentary YouTubers were just downright awful, picking on mostly inexperienced and sometimes pretty young creators on YouTube. Not to mention these criticisms were often misplaced, and they'd say things like if they didn't take their criticism, that these animators were lazy and unwilling to learn, which is ridiculous. Again, watch the video I mentioned before, it's really good. But this not only led to some of these creators getting harassed or even leaving the platform, but also led me and possibly others to be discouraged and out of doing something that I was quite passionate about. As a result, I ended up scrapping every storytime animation video that I tried to make. I also couldn't bring myself to make regular speed paint videos because I kept hearing people say that speed paint videos were boring and not really interesting to watch. And also because I'm an animation student, I felt obligated to make animations even though I had no time to do so. It's silly, really, that I let these things get to me, because there's always an audience out there of people who will like the content that I make. But most importantly, I need to like the content that I make. I realized that I shouldn't care what other people think. I mean, sure, criticism is welcome, but I want to make videos that I like to the best of my ability, without trying to primarily cater to others especially since I have no intention of making YouTube a career. If there's maybe someone watching who wants to start creating something or has started creating, whether it's art or videos or whatever, I want you to know that it's okay for it to not be up to par and meet professional standards. It's okay to be an amateur. The word amateur comes from the word ama, which means love in Latin. The word was originally used to describe those who worked and created for the love of it, not just those who are starting out and aren't any good. I was told that by my high school drama teacher, actually, and it really comforted me in a way. I'm proud to say that I am an amateur, and I'm back to make more videos for myself and others who are willing to accept that. I'm especially determined now because everything kind of went horribly during the editing of my speed paint footage that I'm showing. Once I finished recording my footage, I went to import it into Premiere Pro and while I was editing it, I noticed that it was really smudged and blurred. 
I'm not sure what corrupted the footage to make it look like that, but it only did that on Premiere Pro because when I went to go watch it on QuickTime Player, which is the player app on Macs, and I sped up the footage on there, which you can do as sort of fast forwarding, I noticed that the footage was not corrupted in the same way it was on Premiere Pro. So I ended up having to download a completely separate video editing program, despite the fact that I essentially paid for Premiere Pro through my school. And this other video editing program is called VideoPad, which is what I used to use when I was in high school before I had Premiere Pro. And it worked, but I forgot how heavy this program is. Uh, if you can help it, try not to use VideoPad unless your computer can handle it because the program uses 1.5 gigabytes of memory just to process, at least according to my activity monitor on my MacBook. And it was so slow. It's not worth it. My Mac's fan made noises I've never heard it make before while I was just speeding up my footage. And it not only was it slow editing the footage and making them speed up because the program kept lagging, but once I started exporting the video, it took 10 hours to export the entire thing. My point is I worked far too hard and way too long for me to just not make this video and give up on it. And I almost did. After I finished recording all of this the first time, I almost didn't make this video. But no, I am determined. I want to make this and I want to continue making other videos. As well, since I'm not in school right now because I have to retake a course that's only available uh, in January and I'm unemployed, I'm at home doing nothing and I'm bored and I need to do something with my time. Speaking of, I also have my commissions open. So if you want to commission me for an art piece like the one you're seeing me make right now, check out the description for more information. And if you're one of the 250 subscribers apparently, that subscribed like three, two years ago and forgot about this channel until I showed up in your subscription box and you're not actually interested in what I have to offer, then, uh, sorry. Bye-bye, have a good one. <laughs> By the way, the two characters that you got to watch me drawing here are Gon and Killua from Hunter x Hunter, otherwise known as Hunter x Hunter. I really love this anime, it's among my favorites, and I heavily recommend it if you haven't watched it already. It does contain some themes and topics that can be disturbing for some viewers, so please make sure that you research properly beforehand if you think that that might be a problem, but otherwise it's fantastic and I recommend it. And I'm actually really proud of this piece of fan art that I've made, so I hope you enjoy that as well. All that being said, thank you so much for watching. Over and out, my dudes. I missed saying that. Thank you.